Alright, what's up guys? This is Matthew Burns, and um, I told you that we'd be getting into the programming before I talked about the mechanics of this uh, persistence of vision display. Hold on, give me a sec. Retainers. I told you uh, we'd be getting into the programming first, but because the entire purpose of uh, that whole uh, MCLR talk for the microcontroller that I gave you in the... Uh, in the um, electronics part of this tutorial was so that we could program the microcontroller in circuit because even if you soldered a socket in there and you uh, put the microcontroller in a socket nobody is going to want to pull the microcontroller out of the socket every single time they want to reprogram it so that was the whole purpose to be able to program it in circuit once the thing is already fully completed so um, I thought I would talk about the mechanics of it first and then I'll talk about programming at the very end. So, um, basically, uh, as you can see, it is completed. Um, I really didn't do anything special or new. I just mounted my uh, main circuit board on that centerpiece that I uh, was able to 3D print. If you don't have the ability to 3D print something, uh, I'm not sure you're going to have to make do with whatever you have, whether you end up cutting pieces of wood, if you can work in a... Uh, tech lab in school or something like that. Um, I soldered all the wires from this circuit board that I showed you in the last two tutorials to this circuit board. They're uh, connecting to the green wires which soldered to this circuit board on the microcontroller. Uh, and I have my battery on the back end. And uh, the one really big important thing that I wanted to talk to you about was uh, the center of mass for the arm not including like the red part below or anything like that but before I glued this white part onto the red part what I did was um, I, m I marked out where the white part was going to be sitting on the red part so I had this rectangle and I drew a cross between the uh, diagonal corners so I drew diagonals on the rectangle and found the very center of the rectangle and what I wanted is I wanted the center of mass right on that cross so that the center of mass of this whole white thing, the entire thing, so the center of mass would be directly over the axle of the motor. Because if the center of mass is out here, or way on this end, this thing is going to be throwing itself around and rocking back and forth as it spins. And it's going to be spinning pretty fast, so if it's like the slightest amount off, that's going to be a problem. So uh, what I did was uh, I centered the uh, center of mass right over the center of this, uh, best I could by balancing it on the back of a pencil and then uh, yes as you can see I did hot glue a dime to this side of my project to even it out because it is a little bit heavier on that side than it is on this side even with the battery um, that was the main thing that I wanted to talk to you about uh, because I had tried building a uh, uh, persistence of vision display uh, almost a year ago actually now and that thing was a piece of crap like it threw itself around so much I you had to hold it when it spun it was a disaster so that's really important guys make sure that the center of mass of the arm is directly over the axle of the motor because if it's not right over or pretty darn close it's it's just not gonna work the next thing is um, the 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 piece of metal to interrupt the magnetic field to trip the Hall effect sensor. I found that uh, uh, just a standard screwdriver bit actually worked really well. Um, I've tried a lot of things. I tried putting nails in. As you can see, there are three holes there where I tried putting in even multiple nails side by side, and none of those were able to trip the Hall effect sensor. It always needed like me to put the plier. Uh, between the Hall effect sensor and addition in order to set it off, and obviously I can't do that when it's spinning really fast. So um, I'm using a. Uh, this is just a uh, just a standard screwdriver bit. I drilled a hole in, put the screwdriver bit. Uh, I glued it into the hole. One thing that you want to make sure of, though. This should be pretty obvious, but you have to make sure that uh, when this is spinning around, at no part does it touch, because, or, uh, 
or this cannot have have a lot of give. The hole that it's sitting in has to be a tight fit, because if this has even the slightest amount of give, this is spinning around incredibly fast, and it slams into that. Because it slams into the screwdriver bit because it moves or something like that. Uh, you might as well throw the whole thing away because it's probably going to break a lot of stuff. Um, those were the only two main points I wanted to talk to you about. That, and I did make a small mistake. I do this on every single project. I design it well and everything. I make a nice printed circuit board for it, and I forget to put a switch on. So uh, I have to connect and disconnect the battery connector every single time I want to use this. So if you were watching these videos before you put yours together, and uh, maybe you're just soldering to a Radio Shack printed circuit board, or maybe you can make your printed circuit boards. I highly recommend you put a switch in. Um, those were the only two big things about the uh, mechanics of this that I wanted to talk about. Uh, I thought the rest were pretty self-explanatory, uh, but I guess I could go over it. I just have a wooden structure to hold my device on. Um, I have my motor mounted to that top plate, the round one, uh, and I have it bolted uh, with two wing nuts to the top, um, and the axle of the motor with the red piece I 3D printed is sticking through, and then the arm is then uh, just attached to that. I was going to uh, bolt the white piece to the uh, bolt the white piece to the red piece. But I couldn't fit even my uh, 90 degree screwdriver, I couldn't fit it in this small gap because this wood here is too thick. I wasn't able to get the screw and the screwdriver in there, so I just hot glued it and uh, it ended up working fine. Um, in the next tutorial, we will be covering something a lot more interesting because uh, there's actually stuff to learn, not just tips. Uh, we'll be going over the programming behind this. I am not going to be explaining uh, assembly language, like, from scratch. It's not going to be a tutorial on assembly language. I'm going to be assuming, if you're watching this, you have some basic understanding. Maybe sometime, probably, uh, before next summer or something like that, I'll get up a tutorial on the assembly language for programming PSE microcontrollers. But, uh, until then, there are plenty of other, other places on the, on the internet where you can find that information. So I am going to do a tutorial on uh, the assembly language for this, how I program this, and uh, a few of the problems I had I might mention in case you encounter those same problems. Um, but since it is uh, completely built right now and ready to run, I am um, going to turn it on and turn out the lights and then see if uh, this camera picks up the image pretty well, good or not. So the first thing, obviously, I don't have a switch on mine. Okay. I'll probably have to turn out the lights for this. And uh, one thing, you hear uh, this thing rocking back and forth, well it actually is, it's because the uh, center, of, center of mass of my arm isn't perfectly lined up, and um, because of that it rocks slightly, like it's not off, the center of mass isn't off enough to cause a big problem, it's still over the axle of the motor, but it's not perfectly centered. And so because the feet on my, uh, I have four feet, Instead of three, I guess if you had three it might be more stable, I don't know, but mine actually only has two feet, two wide legs, whatever. Um, the point is, it uh, rocks back and forth because this corner here doesn't, well this or the opposite corner doesn't seat properly. So uh, give me a second and I will fix that temporarily. There we go. And this, I hope it shows up well on the camera, is 
No, it really doesn't. Alright, uh, you guys are just gonna have to take my word for it. It looks a lot better in person than it does on the camera. The camera really does not do this justice at all. It looks like crap on the camera. Um, maybe I can get a better image of it with a different camera. I'll try getting an image maybe with my iPad or my phone or something like that, and I will post it on the same page as this video. So, um, I know this isn't too impressive right now, but I promise it looks a lot better than it does on the camera. I will show you that image. Um, but anyways, uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.